Hey there listeners and welcome to Film Jot Reviews Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Director Quentin Tarantino's self-proclaimed ninth film and I say self-proclaimed because you have to disregard his 1987 debut film My Best Friend's Birthday and count Kill Bill Volume 1 and 2 as one whole film also not including anything he guest directed in. The movie follows more or less a day in the life of actor Rick Dalton and his stunt double Cliff Booth in 1969 Hollywood, whom happen to be neighbors to rising star actress Sharon Tate. Now, returning listeners will know that I usually try to divulge more of the plot from a film, but Although this movie is 20 minutes shy of 3 hours long, there really seems to be almost no real plot. Instead, we get a bunch of mixed character moments with flashbacks to events or information we need to know, plus scenes that don't have a quick notable payoff but do connect in their own interesting ways. This movie really showcases two buds and who they are on a convoluted human level. Not necessarily relatable characters, but interesting nevertheless. Leonardo DiCaprio returns to the big screen after three years after his Oscar win for The Revenant, now playing Rick Dalton, a moderately known actor struggling with alcohol as he struggles to stay relevant in Hollywood, feeling that his best of days are behind him. To be expected, DiCaprio breathes life into an emotionally troubled man who must flip on a dime to perform in front of a camera. Also notable is his chemistry with Brad Pitt, playing stunt double Rick Dalton. Now, Dalton is a man of simple wants and needs, not much care in the world, and comes across very cool and calm. It's quite entertaining seeing Brad Pitt in this role. However, the role doesn't lend itself to be very reactive or emotional, so it isn't a performance high for Brad, but the character himself and a bit of the mystery behind him keeps viewers intrigued with his part to play in this film. Now, within the film, there are several notable cameo appearances that are well and done. However, casting the wonderful Margot Robbie as Sharon Tate was just a huge waste. Actually, the character of Sharon Tate in this film is almost a waste. I feel the purpose of the character was to help drive anticipation and suspense but none of that actually works unless you know of the real life Sharon Tate. Now, I've heard people say that if you don't know who she is, then wait till after the movie to Google her life. Personally, I'm on the boat that says you should Google who she is before watching the film. So in respect, I will not just tell you here and now what it is you need to know, but Feel free to choose yourself, and then let me know in the comments. Overall, this movie is difficult to talk about without going into greater detail about what scene works and how it may or may not. It's just stuffed with character moments that isn't easy to comment on without showing the movie. It's also a long, slow burn kind of film. Scenes happen without it necessarily telling you something or being entertaining. Some things just happen and you have to sit through it until something else interesting or funny comes along. It toggles trying to be suspenseful but also humorous and I think it does both but Almost three hours is a lot for riding back and forth on a plotless film. Saying that now makes me think of the show Seinfeld. 
it's a show about nothing, but you keep watching because of the characters. I don't feel I've said enough just yet on where to stand with this film. If you've seen any of Tarantino's previous work, then you know whether or not you like his tone and how he films and writes. If you enjoy his work, then this movie will fit somewhere within that realm for you. If you saw the trailer and thought it looked fine, then probably don't watch it because the trailer itself is a heightened version of the overall film. If you're outside of those realms, then probably don't watch it at all. Go try another one of his films before deciding, preferably Pulp Fiction or Inglorious Bastards. Those two films hit the tone, but this current film is definitely less violent. Personally, I actually enjoyed this movie. It's weird, it has some humor, I love the characters. Maybe not the easiest one to rewatch, but I consider it one of Tarantino's better films, and it has plenty of random memorable moments. But like I said, it's hard to recommend and has enough that can be said against it that it's not worth arguing about. It all just comes down to preference. Anyways, there we have it. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Make sure to let me know what you thought of the film over on Twitter at FilmJot or Instagram at Film underscore Jot. And a quick shout out to my old buddy Tritip who just had his first kid and has been a big supporter of this podcast. I hope all is good and hey maybe you can take the kid to go see the film. He'll definitely grow up quick after watching this movie. P.S. That is a joke. Please, no one take their kid to see this film. Thanks again to anyone for listening, and until next time, this is Film Jot. Stay friendly, you guys.